Godofrey, you have a, a strong focus on integrating technology with yes. the art industry. And uh, uh, which uh, technology has really uh, brought innovation into the industry? I think uh, one thing that strikes me predominantly is oral cancers. Mm -hmm. So uh, oral cancers is by and large the second or third largest uh, cancer that we have in this country. Mm -hmm. It constitutes to a significant number and because of the use of our spices, because of the use of uh, uh, you know tobacco, okay. supari mm -hmm. and also people neglecting their oral health. A simple thing like a sharp tooth margin, a mm -hmm. tooth which is slightly sharp, mm -hmm. which your tongue or your cheek you're fiddling with mm -hmm. turns into a cancer. You never visit a dentist because you think it's not hurting me. It's mm -hmm. not causing me pain. Mm -hmm. But just that sharp tooth which is there mm -hmm. can lead you into a cancer which is going to be fatal. Mm -hmm. And the technology that has really impressed upon me mm -hmm. is, is, is a technology which is a light thrown into the patient's mouth mm -hmm. and it can recognize where there is cancer developing in the mouth. Okay. Because an early stage detection of cancer mm -hmm. can give you almost a certain 100% cure. Unfortunately, people neglect mm -hmm. and then it comes into a full-blown cancer and then we have and, nothing uh, to say. Uh, I mean, uh, is it fatal? Uh, oral oh yeah, absolutely. Oral cancer is very deadly and very fatal. Yes, yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. So this fluoroscopy device uh -huh. has actually won my heart mm -hmm. as an innovation because it's a completely non-invasive technique. See, the moment you talk about a biopsy, everybody is scared. Mm -hmm. But if you just take a torch and put a light in and on a screen, if you're able to get the reflection that this is a cancerous lesion or not, okay. it's such a great innovation. Right. So that has actually taken, but in mm -hmm. practice, in principle. So through fluoroscopy, you yeah. can get the, uh, get the complete uh, yes, scene absolutely. on the screen. On the screen. Yes. And it's a non-invasive one second thing. So you just flash the light in mm -hmm. and then you'll have that. So innovations like this, mm -hmm truly uh, win my heart because they are preventative mm. and second thing they're not painful or pain causing mm. and 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 catching oral cancers at such early stages mm. gives a whole bandwidth even to the treating doctor to make sure that the patient remains healthy okay. so now also talking about uh, cancer uh, you have you are a pioneer uh, I mean, you have started some home centers also, right. and also uh, you uh, for uh, uh, dental care for the cancer patients. Right. So, can you explain more about that? Yes. So, uh, basically, when it comes to uh, home care or you know cancer care that we do, almost hundred percent of people who go through any sort of cancer go through radiation or chemotherapy, okay. and the treatment itself causes mm -hmm. certain oral conditions okay. you know and 100% of them suffer from that mm -hmm. and in that stage where they are so much so um, even uh, for oral cancer you go for a chemotherapy yes yes absolutely mm -hmm. but I'm talking about anybody having any general any yeah, other just cancer not cancer just an yeah course. but the treatment itself mm -hmm. can cause certain oral conditions okay. and they need to be taken care of on a very regular basis it's not that you will come and do it once every six months or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is, you know, it's, it's uh, so heartfelt that they're going through something that is so disturbing. The family is emotionally disturbed. Mm -hmm. And if they have to keep coming for their dental uh, treatments to the clinic would be difficult. Mm -hmm. So for disabled people, for people who are chronically ill with cancers and stuff like that, we do home care wherein we visit their homes and do every protocol that is necessary to maintain that oral hygiene status better. And you have also started a foundation called uh, Vatsalya. Yes. Vatsalya Care. Yes, Vatsalya Oral Health Foundation. Vatsalya Oral Health Foundation. Yes. So what are the aims of this uh, foundation? So basically that is an initiative that we are working on uh, focused on how do we make dental care affordable. What are the steps that need to be taken without compromising on quality and infection control and hygiene, mm -hmm. but still deliver optimal care? Mm -hmm. That is an initiative and we go an outreach uh, on an outreach to remote areas where there's zero access to, uh, you know, care like the tribal villages 
or it could be old age homes mm -hmm. it could be persons who are disabled and poor Okay. So the and, so and you have various centers in uh, different places. No, you, so we do something. Yes, places. yes. So we do something called as portable dentistry, mm -hmm. which is that every equipment that is there with us in a dental clinic, mm -hmm. we have also a portable version of the same. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is that we take that mm -hmm. and go, including an X-ray, mm -hmm. can be done on the field on the go. And so we take that mm -hmm. and go to these uh, marginalized populations of our country mm -hmm. and try to provide care. Okay. And uh, you have been uh, involved in uh, special development. Yes. And also, uh, I mean, with the uh, disabled uh, people. Yes. So what is the, uh, like, uh, how do you approach uh, these patients sir, with uh, disability? Yeah, it's a very, very, very emotional uh, part to me especially uh, because I find that uh, uh, this population nobody wants to attend okay. you know mm -hmm. uh, most mainstream doctors uh, either are not trained mm -hmm. or are not having the inclination to mm -hmm. go ahead and treat them mm -hmm. uh, they have very good intent I'm not saying no doctor has an intent to treat patients mm -hmm. don't get me wrong on that but it's just the system that we have been sucked into does not allow us mm -hmm. to do something like this mm -hmm. and almost two decades ago I uh, came into Special Olympics mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, run by the Kennedy family okay. and so it's a f international foundation which is doing some great work which is bringing in sports for intellectually disabled people and so we are a part of a program which is called Healthy Athletes wherein we take part and ensure their health of those athletes or those persons with intellectual disabilities is well and they are doing fine. So these are at Olympic venues when Olympic Games happen. We do have World Olympic Games for persons with intellectual disabilities through Special Olympics. It's a very, very large international NGO that is functioning and doing some amazing work. Uh, why is oral health specifically more important in these people is all the more important because they are already having some sort of a disability mm -hmm. and having poor oral hygiene mm -hmm. will bring it, mm -hmm. you know, even more bigger. It will completely worsen the condition, their performance levels will go bad, mm -hmm. their general, mm -hmm. you know, and physical well-being will go bad mm -hmm. and so it's a very important aspect that we all contribute towards such Causes. That is fantastic, uh, Doctor. Yeah, just really, in really, yeah. yeah. No, no it's 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 been a very emotional thing for me. Yes. Uh, if you just imagine, I can't even think of how a person who is blind will brush his teeth, right? Just mm -hmm. imagine how will you even teach him how to brush? Mm -hmm. Imagine somebody who's had stroke mm -hmm. and both his hands are not working. How will he brush his teeth? And for all you know, mm -hmm. that his poor oral hygiene could have caused him a stroke. And if he has to continue to have good oral hygiene, mm. how is he going to do that? So assistive brushing mm. and so many. So this is where technology but can come in. people with uh, disability, oh, yeah. they are so depressed. Absolutely. And uh, their own main focus will be on their disability and they don't think of anything Absolutely. Else. Absolutely. And uh, at that stage, an old doctor will really help them. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's so much of work that needs to be done yes. still. We are still at a very nascent stage though. Yes. Uh, you are the founding member of uh, Holo Medicine Association. And what is this Holo Medicine all about? Yeah. And uh, again, uh, what? Uh, how does it uh, really uh, give a health uh, delivery? Right. So, uh, this association called as the Holo Medicine Association is a global consortium of some very top-notch doctors, mm -hmm. uh, technology experts mm -hmm. and policy experts who have come together to form this association and I'm privileged and very honored to be a part of the founding team of this Holo Medicine Association which was formed in Belgium. Mm -hmm. And the sole purpose or goal of this is to improve and enhance outcomes of patient care to improve and enhance the quality of education of students in medicine and to improve 
and enhance the quality of understanding of what a person is going through in a healthcare setting. So basically patient education. Mm -hmm. So this technology is supported by Microsoft, mm -hmm. wherein the technology is used in such a way that you, you have everything real time. So if I give you an example, uh, on a normal situation, a person would look at an x-ray, mm -hmm. assume certain things mm -hmm. and go ahead and operate. A person would look at a CT scan or an MRI, mm -hmm. assume and go and operate. Mm -hmm. You actually do not know the exact anatomy and stuff like that. But in holo medicine, mm -hmm. the technology gives the doctor mm -hmm. two visions. One is the real vision of the particular operating environment mm -hmm. and a virtual vision which is of what he is supposed to see. So you can just flip and superimpose this scan on the patient's body or the face or the operating area and actually operate in such a way that you are knowing exactly and precisely where you are going. So it is highly precise and precision driven. Second is you can actually educate the patient as well. Today I am drawing things for you in 2D. I am trying to explain things. Where is your heart, lung, liver, teeth? Yeah. And the scan itself explains everything to the patient. Yeah. So this will be a virtual body that you will be seeing in front of you and the doctor can clearly explain and also explain how he is going to approach this through where and, and do it. So you have clarity. Mm -hmm. And the same thing can be used as a model for educating you know, students in medicine and dentistry wherein they can actually look and feel and see. Okay. Most importantly, mm -hmm. suppose I am operating in Bangalore. And I need somebody's assistance or help who is an expert in America. Or it could be the other way around that somebody from America needs our assistance from here. Mm -hmm. You can virtually holoport that person into your operating room. Oh. And it's not just that it's virtual, but you can feel that the person is there with you, guiding you through the whole procedure. So this is a next level kind of sci-fi kind of a technology that uh, you know is being worked out. Mm -hmm. It's already uh, in something in some... like uh, VR. <laughs> yes. Virtual, uh, yes. Yeah. But in VR, yeah. uh, in VR, you only have the virtual world. Mm -hmm. But in this, you have the real world and the virtual world superimposed together. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the marked difference, which is going to uh, leverage and completely change the landscape mm -hmm. of the way. Is it available is... for the uh, for the patients of yes, India today? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, not in India because I think we were waiting for the 5G to come up because it requires a 5G uh, uh, net connectivity. Sooner than later, it will be available in India because uh, also the Microsoft HoloLens mm -hmm. was, uh, I think, recently launched. Mm -hmm. So it will take some time for people to adapt here. But in the West, there's a definitive uh, uh, program that is already running. On I have heard uh, most of the people from the West, hmm. they come to India for uh, oral, I mean for dental hygiene and things like that, even for an extractor of tooth. Yeah. I think, is, is, am I right? I yeah. don't know. I have heard some patients. No, you're right. Hmm. Uh, absolutely right. Because uh, of two reasons. Number one is obviously economic factors because oral health care is probably 10 or 20 times more expensive than what it is in India. Okay. Second is the access to doctors is not so easy in the West because your appointment waiting line and timeline is, is enormous. Mm -hmm. In India, you can have the luxury of calling uh, my office today and getting an appointment for this evening, okay. right? And mm -hmm. you will be seen by the uh, most senior super specialist doctor, yeah. uh, you know, at your doorstep, if I have to say that. Yeah, I think but, it is so economical because yeah. uh, they, it yeah. also covers their uh, flight charges, everything. Absolutely. I mean, that works. So, well, unfortunately, that's... certain policies and regulations uh, make it very difficult in the West to access doctors and especially dentists. So, you're, uh, there are situations where you have to pre-book your appointment in months and if you're going through something like braces and all that, your probable appointment will be after two years or four years, I've heard. And so that's like absolutely crazy. And so those are some of the th reasons why they land up in India. And obviously, we must also be very proud of the fact that Indian doctors are one of the best and the most skilled doctors anywhere around the globe. So so those are the reasons. And, and there's so much amount of compassion and there's so much amount of uh, you know availability to your patients.
and that is That's the incredible. reason. Yeah, Indian absolutely. doctors are much, yeah, much better than the oh, yeah, Western doctors. Uh, okay, uh, with your uh, background launching a digital application, so what do you want to say and how crucial it is for uh, effective learning? So, uh, it's a two-faced mirror wherein I think uh, the primary goal of uh, doing something like this is to educate people like whatever we've been speaking if we are able to put it on a platform where people can get educated about that is one of the most important things and second is also the second phase which will go into you know students of dentistry or to students of oral health on how do you approach your subject what are the 10 things that you need to make sure that you are well aware of mm -hmm. as a scientific student of oral care mm -hmm. and that fundamental is what is coming up on this uh, platform which we have just started you have an app or something where they can yes uh, yes so we are we have built an app mm -hmm. and we are actually in the process of uh, curating content for it mm -hmm. it's just that we are still debating on uh, which way to approach mm -hmm. and things like that but no sooner than later we will have that. Okay. And uh, uh, considering your uh, global uh, approach, uh, you have a uh, you have a global experience of uh, dentistry, I can say. And how do you bring the best practices of the world uh, in your dentistry? <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a lot of credit must go to the West uh, because. I think what they are good at is process. What they are good at is meticulousness. What they are good at is detail. And what they are good at is absolute focus on making sure that A to Z, everything is done. You know, And that is a very important aspect that uh, Indian healthcare system must learn. And uh, that is something that we have gotten. Second is the focus on hygiene and infection control, like I spoke about. That it's a very, very integral part or a portion to provision of good quality care. Because you can't come for a treatment and go back mm -hmm. with another disease. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so that focus of infection control and hygiene is important. And the third and the most important thing is fundamentals of care. Okay. I think that is a very important aspect. So that you pick up from places around the globe and merge it with the unbeatable talent that India has. Merge it with the unbeatable refreshing attitudes that our doctors have and the commitment that they have to serve our population is never found anywhere else. I would, I would rather, it would be wrong for me to generalize, but I think by and large our Indian doctors are very passionate about what they want to do and, and very very dedicated very dedicated very available the unfortunate reality is mm. that somewhere mm. we all are less confident because if we hear something from the west only we feel it's gospel yeah. that has to change yeah, that has to that change, has that to change big has time to change. yeah because the kind of work that we do we don't organize it well and present it well. That's the only thing. It's not that we aren't doing. In fact, some of the most complicated things mm. and the different approaches that we have to providing care mm. and innovation is here. Mm. But we don't present it well because we are also burdened with time mm. and lack of resources. Mm. For us to do this, I will have to have a battery of people putting in presentations, writing things up. So that is the way the West is very well organized. Yeah, the process. Yeah, they are very process oriented. Yes, and so here we are very focused yeah. about patient is and front of me. get carried away with that. Exactly. Yes. Get carried away. But if you see the reality of how medicine is being delivered, hmm. Indian, this minute you will be treated. Hmm. Whereas the same process becomes a disability there hmm. where they'll say, no, there's no priority for you. You'll have to wait for one week before a doctor sees you. You'll have to wait for two weeks before sometimes your blood reports come in. Like that's obnoxious, right? In India, in 20 minutes, you'll have everything up and running. And the most senior doctor will feel responsible to come and meet you and talk to you. And that's the beauty of Indian healthcare system. And I just hope and pray that's that we do not... This, that, yeah, absolutely. Is a new to Indian doctor. Absolutely. And I just hope yes. and pray that this is not destroyed. 
because somewhere all of us in our minds feel that we have to look at the west and we have to become like that and that's not the right thing for india every country has its own way of functioning and that authenticity should be left alone because the kind of patients also that come to us are different from the ones that we see somewhere else but the bottom line is everybody is looking for love compassion and empathy and that is what indian doctors have and that's the beauty and it should never die and it is always said that uh, like uh, I have always said that when you talk to a patient, uh, the empathy that you show, the compassion yeah. you show, goes a long way. That's the only thing that matters. Medicines or oh, yeah, the yes. I've I've had it in so many instances in the last twenty-seven years of my practice where a patient would have come with a prescription saying, uh, you know, uh, I took this mm. and it didn't work. Mm. I just take it, tear it, throw it, mm. have a conversation with the patient. Mm. write the similar medication mm. and give it to them mm. it works better it works better second is it's my own observation i don't have any scientific data to prove all of these things but i have seen that today because of digitization of a lot of things mm. even your prescription is printed mm. i feel mm. i have always written prescriptions for my patients mm. and when i as a doctor think and pray good for my patient's well being and with that intent when i write that medication and the patient is witnessing that that is a great leveler than printing out a prescription and telling him take this two times a day and three times a day i've that seen it personal touch yeah. and uh, even writing a prescription exactly. with your own hand works. absolutely absolutely yes. Yes. but having said that we must all write legibly that people understand <laughs> <laughs> so that is because <laughs> Yeah, so, exactly. It's very difficult to read. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much, uh, Shivat. Always. Uh, Shivat uh, Bharadwaj. It was such a wonderful uh, experience for me interacting with you. Was a pleasure. Learning more and more about uh, dentistry and how important uh, oral hygiene uh, is. for uh, today's generation yes. and it leads to other uh, diseases also and absolutely. preventive oral hygiene is uh, absolutely necessary for every 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 uh, citizen of uh, the country so thank absolutely. you so much for giving my me pleasure. so much of insights you are no i must i must thank you for inviting me for this great opportunity where i can share my mind insights and experiences and if it's going to help our population and dental students or dentists yeah. that is the only satisfaction i derive out of this and i should thank you for this opportunity thank you so much thank you <laughs> thank you